All right, guys, so we're here back from a little break, and I'm here with Phil from Board Game Crate, and you're going to fill me in. <laughs> uh, easy, quick joke, I put in that one, uh, about what's happening with you guys here at UK Games Expo. But before we get into that, we're going to talk about this Geekinson table that we're sitting at yes. here, which is very, very nice indeed. So this is the table that you can win as part of the raffle during the live stream and across this whole weekend. We're working with Geek and Son. What we're going to do is go over onto their link that's at the top of their live of the live blog. I know you're already taking all these details. Oh yes, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got to answer a very very simple question. You fill in your details and pay it's about five pounds for a raffle ticket, something like that. And you could walk away with one of these amazing tables. In fact, this exact table for your room, so you can play loads of awesome games on it house so yes get involved with that and make sure to check out all the stuff we're doing over the, over the weekend for our live blog and our live streams as well but yes phil i want you to tell me a little bit about what board game crate is all about because it's a very interesting prospect and i think some people will be very interested in getting delving in a little bit deeper into this what it's all about. absolutely so we are a board game subscription service mm -hmm. um but with uh, a lot more intelligence behind the scenes on how we pick the games put okay. them in a crate and, and send them out mm -hmm. So um, what we do first of all is we look at the games you've got in your existing library. Cool. So if you've got a, uh, a board game geek account, for example, okay. we can download your library of games from there. Awesome. We analyze all of the data points behind those games. Mm -hmm. We look at the categories and the mechanics mm -hmm. that make up that game. So is it dice rolling? Is it hand management? Yeah. Is it bluffing? All of the characteristics that go in to make that game what it is. Mm -hmm. We build up a, a gamer profile for you, your own personal set of data, if you like. Mm -hmm. And then our system will look through that data yep. and work out what games fit best with your library. Awesome. OK, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So you can set preferences around that library as well. So yeah. you can tell us how strictly you want us to look at your, your analytics, basically. Mm -hmm. So you might want games that, that fit within your top three categories of mechanics, mm -hmm. all the way down to, you know what, I don't care about my data. Just send me any game you think is good. And I'll be surprised with what you send me. Absolutely, so, yeah. 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 We like to think of it as a, as a bit of a safe surprise. Which so is one of the cool things I learned about this. So <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, it's a surprise because you're getting some interesting and in, in, in new games, but it's a safe one because it's all done around the kind of games that you enjoy, and it's done with you know a, a high level of game as well. So you can see we've got, for example, Azul here as well, yeah. and Muti and Russian, things like that. So, so yeah, very cool indeed. Um, so so when, is, when does it go from that point on? So you've filled in all those analytics, yep. and you've decided on that. What, what's the next stage that happens for people? So you can so. also fill in your wish list as well. Cool. So a feature right. we very recently launched, uh, my wife and I, who, who run Board Game Geek, we're, we're uh, Board Game Crate, we are uh, software developers as well as board games, so we're always improving the system. We've always looked at wish lists, but we thought it'd be much better to give people uh, a bit more control over it. So you can go onto our site, uh, as well as onto Board Game Geek, and identify games you'd like to receive, and you can tell us how strictly you want us to look at your wish list as well. So you yeah. might say, okay, look, uh, I use my wish list in this particular way. Mm -hmm. I want games that I've really said I must have. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at your wish list first, and if we can get games from your wish list, then then you'll go for it. That's our first port of call. Awesome. So this month, uh, in the May crate just gone, we sent out about twenty-four copies of Colt Express because we. Which have, is an awesome game. By it the is way, a very good game. It, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, twenty-four of our subscribers said Colt Express is on our wish list. Perfect. That's really cool. Yeah. What What are some of the other games that have been like the top of people's wish lists over the last couple of months? Well, yeah. this one right here, obviously, is all. Uh, we keep seeing that at the yeah. top of our wish list. Just Just so you're aware, Lance, who's just outside looking after the cameras <laughs> and everything, he really, really wants a copy of Azul, and he's been wandering around the UK Games Expo trying to find it. But if he signed up to a board game crate, then he, he may would have, have got a, a copy of it himself. He would have had it at the end of last year. <laughs> so we saw this uh, at Essen last year. We uh, mm -hmm. we went to Essen, looked around all the games that we thought uh, mm -hmm. you know will pop up next year. We saw Azul. We immediately put an order in straight away. Mm -hmm. uh, 50 copies of us all turned up, and we shipped them out straight away. And I think they went out. Uh, it was either November or December last year. Awesome. And so, what are what are some of those? So we've talked about us all there. What are some of the other ones that have appeared at the top of the list? Well? So uh, photosynthesis, another uh, good one. Another yeah, good one. So. We sent that out at the end of last year as well. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the you know some of the modern classics are there as well. So people are wishing for for copies of Carcassonne and mm -hmm. Catan and Ticket to Ride and Pandemic, you know, they're all still... So in, in a way, you can almost look at you guys as being able to kind of build the foundation for someone's collection as well. So yep. you may be even getting into this for the first time. Absolutely. And you maybe don't know exactly what your favorite mechanics could be. You can sort of say, oh, well, I'll see what the, all these sort of base games are like Carcassonne and yep. Catan and use that as a base starting point and then learn a little bit more about the mechanics you like and then go from there. Which Absolutely. Is cool. So we very recently launched yeah. what we call our Modern Classic Starter Pack, mm -hmm. which is a set of 12 games that we've identified as modern classics. Things you need to pick Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Yeah. So it is. It's your Tickets to Ride, it's your Carcassonne, it's your Power Grid, 
Yeah. Uh, it's your Camel Up, you know, yeah. the sort of Spiel de Jahr winners that, mm. that most board gamers have in their collection as a gateway to, to, to the board Looking game world. different things. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. You're also saying to me that you guys do some stuff with um, sort of Kickstarter as well. So how, how does that sort of work in the mechanics of what you do? So one of the things that we really, really are keen about is making sure that we reinvest back into the games industry. So uh, we, take, we take what comes in through Board Game Crate, and most of it is spent on, on, on buying the board games, but we reinvest it back into Kickstarter. So mm -hmm. two prime examples that we backed are Museum Rush and yeah. Goblin Goblins. Um, we have backed others, so things like uh, Escape from the Dark Castle, Potato Pirates, mm -hmm. um, Leaders of Euphoria. Mm -hmm. We see them on Kickstarter, we really like the idea, and we will back them. And then once they, uh, once they arrive, we give our subscribers the opportunity to opt in to receiving a free copy of these, and cool. they basically end up as a third free game in their crate That's as, a, awesome. as an extra safe surprise. Wow, fantastic. That's really cool. You're actually taking me through some of the, the stuff that you guys have done in terms of like the information about your analytics and all that kind of thing as yeah, well. Sure. So I believe it was on the back of these we were showing off some of the stuff. So I'm just going to put this onto the lower camera so you can see some of the differences within the value of the games and the subscriptions yeah. and stuff like that. So do you want to just quickly walk through me? Yeah, through sure. This as well? so, so we looked at uh, three example crates we've sent out over the past six months. So one particular crate was Azul and Tichu. Another one was Bunny Kingdom and the Grimwood, which is another game we saw at Essen last year. And another one was Photosynthesis and the Bloody Inn. And when we looked at the, uh, the retail value of those games, they came out at just six pence shy of £175, which as a, as a value proposition, it's, it's great. You know, you're saving money straight away. But one of the bits of feedback we get is, well, you know, I could have, I could have got those games on Amazon. I could go and pick them and research them and, and buy them myself. So we thought, OK, well, let's, I should say, online retailer. And there are other <laughs> online retailers available. Um, so we looked, at, we looked at the online retailer, and this was a week and a half ago, and it came out at £142.81. Now, if those same six games had come up in a continuous three-month subscription, that's just ninety nine ninety nine. Pretty awesome. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. And so what's some of the other stuff that you guys have been showing up here as well? So you've got... Um, oh, so this is going through some of the things... So that's going through how the process works. This is the process, as you can see here. So if you've so got a... Like the Board Game Geek yep, thing and stuff absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Going through there. And you've if you don't have a Board Game Geek account, you yeah. can uh, add the games in yourself on the website. We make that super easy. Yeah. Uh, much the same as adding in a wish list. You just start <coughs> typing the name of the game, two letters in, and our system will come back and say, oh, I think you're yeah. talking about this game. Yeah. You click, you add, and you keep going. Uh, we will always bring down from Board Game Geek if we can. We don't push back to Board Game Geek, so we okay. like to keep the sanctity of that data secure. So you can, you know, you can Which do, is do what you like. Absolutely, Absolutely. yeah. So yeah, very cool indeed. And so you guys are here, at, obviously, at the convention. You've we got are. where? What, what's your booth if people want to come over and check you guys out? So, so. we're in Hall Ten, and we are stand H Ten. There you go. Fantastic, guys. Um, you also got some interesting things you're showing off this, uh, yeah, this weekend absolutely. as well. So I believe it's a little tiny box. There is a little there. tiny box. So people who yeah. come up to the stand and uh, want to walk away with something today, they can sign up for a, uh, a three-month subscription or a six or a 12 or, yeah. a, or a trial crate. Um, and because it's a, it's, a, it's a subscription crate, obviously walking away with games right now would, would be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've put together a a nice little box that's got a, a branded board game geek bit bowl in it. Which we're going to show. Which we've got there. Oh, yeah, I love these things. I was, <laughs> I was saying to Phil earlier that I play a lot of Star Wars Destiny. And so these things are always fantastic for your dice. And they're really good when you're doing role playing as well. Absolutely. I so they're yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So we've popped one of those in there. We've got our, our, our branded scoring pad, of course. This, you know what you can use these for? Escape the Dark Castle. Absolutely. You yep. Note down Hit all your health points and stuff like that. There you go. There's some more things we'd use that for. Which so we're giving those away, for. giving those away on our stand as well, and we're we're giving them to people with the idea that they can write down the list of games they really like and they want to come back and buy. And it seems that to work perfect. really well. Yeah, that absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you uh, is a little bit about um, your experience with with gaming in general. So where did where did you start from when it came to tabletop gaming? Were you like a board gamer straight away, or did you go into card games or war games? So we actually, it? but my wife and I, we actually started off with Magic the Gathering. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we it's a good uh, starting point. For a lot of people yeah, absolutely. Nowadays, so, so. Uh, we started playing that, and then we slowly got more and more into mm -hmm. uh, into board games. We we've got a, a local bricks and mortar store called Eclectic Games in Reading, mm -hmm. and we absolutely adore them. Um, and so we just started going there almost every weekend, mm -hmm. uh, speaking to uh, to Daryl and Becky in there, and buying another game, <laughs> taking it home, playing it, and going back the next. Day. And before we knew it, we were starting to think, right, well, if I get these three games and you get those three games, mm -hmm. you know, it, it evens itself up. But yeah, yeah, so we just started playing more and more and more. Um, and then our, with our experience of, of, of playing Magic and running a, a Magic the Gathering booster box subscription-based system, we thought, well, look, how can we transpose our love of board games 
that took into, you on that next step into the same forward. sort of thing. Yeah. And we started playing around with uh, the Board Game Geek uh, API, and we emailed them off back in uh, 2015 and asked for permission to use the use the data. And they came back and said, "Yeah, absolutely, no problem whatsoever." So we thought, right, what can we do? Mm -hmm. Machine learning, AI. So uh, my wife and I were both software developers. Yeah. We thought, how can we use this data to really influence? and give us back some information on what games we mm -hmm. should we should we should play so we started tinkering around with it and we thought you know it's a really cool idea <laughs> we can really bring in some yeah. some artificial intelligence some some machine learning mm -hmm. and really start to build up a profile so from there it just barrel rolled and we thought yeah. okay you know what there, there, there's something here yeah and you're so taking you guys are then taking your love and your passion for board gaming and tabletop gaming and making sure that everyone else has that same accessibility to that as well absolutely so, absolutely so. one of the things we're doing on the stand is we're actually doing a live demo mm -hmm. of what our system would would pick yeah and what's really great Which is quite is, handy to see yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so people are coming up to the stand we're putting in their board game geek id we're bringing back their their, their collection and their wish list and we're doing some live analytics so we're showing them what their collection looks cool. like cool we had a customer come up uh, yesterday and say, oh, I really hate area control games. I absolutely can't stand them. So I said, OK, well, let, let's have a look at your collection. So yeah. we pop in their data, uh, pop in their details, bring the data back, bring their games back. Lo and behold, their third most popular mechanic, area control. <laughs> like, did you even realize that existed? It was like, no, how does that work? So then we bring back the games that our system would suggest. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it, it's, it's not looking at, at live stock feeds at that particular point because it's just a demo. Um, but it's bringing back games that, that customers already knew they wanted yeah. or they just bought. Yeah. And that's yeah. fantastic to see that the system actually really does work. It does reflect the gamers and what, and what they're looking at. So yeah. on the tabletop. So what, what's on your, your like hit list at the moment? What's the game that you're playing at the, mo the most at the tabletop? So. so the games we're playing most at the moment are things like, uh, well, we play a lot of Potion Explosion. Yeah. So we're still- I love we're, that game. We're still, yeah. yeah we're I played still, that at Gen Con I think, oh, yeah. last year. It was yeah. really good fun. One of our uh, a lovely uh, US correspondents, Dawn, bought that, and it was really good fun. That's a good game. So we've got the uh, the Fifth Element expansion pack, which is yeah. still in our pile of shame. <laughs> we have a pile of shame going Everyone on. Everyone has that. We, we, it's all there, after, especially after conventions. That's yes. the thing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, ours is ours is even worse because we get games sent to us to mm -hmm. try from from independent publishers who want us to put their their games in there mm -hmm. in our crate. And we have we have two hard and fast rules that we live by when it comes to putting games in crates. Mm -hmm. First of all. The game has to have a board game geek rating of six or more. Cool. If it's less than six, we don't consider it because mm -hmm. the, the, the rating system is there to, to protect you from, from, from getting a bad game. Yeah, it's trying to get that level of quality across Absolutely. so that people know that they're going to get something that's good. Yeah. If it's less than 6.5, then we have so. to have played it and loved it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the second rule of thumb is that the combination of games we put in the crate, the retail value of those games has to be higher than the value of the crate we've sent you. Awesome. So cool. you're always assured yeah. of, 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 of yeah. good quality, good, great value games. But going back to your original question, yeah, yeah, the games we're playing, <laughs> yeah. um, we're playing a lot of Ticket to Ride. Yeah. Now I know okay. it's a classic, but the problem is I keep losing. <laughs> I lose almost every single game of this I play. So I keep going back and back and back. And luckily, yeah. it's a game that my wife absolutely loves, which now is, is it, fantastic. Now, is this the original Ticket to Ride, or is it one of their, like, Markland or one of those? So we've got it? the original one. We've also yeah. got the, uh, the UK map as well. Awesome. And then, of course, yeah. we've got the iOS apps where we mm -hmm. can go on and we can play all the, 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 yeah. different, the different maps yeah. as well. So we keep going back to that one. We keep going back <laughs> to Ticket to Ride. Um, we keep going back to Retro Lunacy as well, which is a great oh, right. uh, small card one. game from Looney yeah. Labs. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a match symbols mm -hmm. card game, um, but you're trying to get a run so that you can, you can get out. But yeah. uh, when nobody can go, you've got to pick up. You've got three different uh, uh -huh. piles to put down on. Uh -huh. So we've been playing that a lot. Um, in terms of games we played recently, most of our focus in the past few weeks has been setting up for our first exhibition stand. So Cause you, say, cause you were saying that this is the first time you guys have been here as an exhibitor and, and a trader and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So, so it's been a bit, uh, been a bit yeah. nerve wracking. Um, making sure that all the boxes are all the boxes are ticked, um, <laughs> and making sure that we've got everything we need. Yeah. Um, so we're we're, we're we're tech heavy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our system relies on 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 lots of stuff in the cloud to make sure that their data is analysed properly and pulled down. So. We've got to make sure that all the backups are there and that the, all mm -hmm. the backup systems are, are ready to go because the worst thing would be is not being able to, to do things on the stand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're massive board gamers. Um, we've got more board games at home than, than, than we can 
deal with. We've got storage <laughs> units of, of, of board games where we thought we haven't played that recently. We'll put that in the storage unit. We'll get that back out when we move and we've got a bigger house. Is it, is it like Indiana Jones? And it's like, where, where has it been put? It's in a safe place. It's, yes. It's, it's like that yeah. warehouse of wonders. Yeah. yeah basically. We've still got games we've brought back from Essen last year that mm -hmm. we haven't played. So MS Batori we haven't played yet. Um, but we, we keep going back to things like Altiplano, Azul, obviously. Um, Indian Summer, Cottage Garden, we love those games. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen in the, uh, the UK Games Expo magazine, mm -hmm. uh, front and centre uh, in the middle is the article that we wrote about the date night equation. Yes, I had, I had a look so, at that yesterday, yeah. it's very cool. It's yeah. a, it was a really interesting idea that, that my wife Amy came up with, that she then wrote the, the article, I kind of got a bit of a bad state because I didn't <laughs> put my name next to it, but there we go. Uh, you know. um, and yeah, it's a really interesting equation about how board games are actually, for, for a date night, they're a much better investment than going to the cinema, uh, having a meal out. This is one of the things, it, it's, uh, I think that board games and, and a lot of tabletop games in general, maybe not particularly role-playing games, but they're almost that immediate ice-breaking thing yeah. as well. Because you're immediately talking about things, you're, you're developing things. So it, it's not just great for the date night, it's great for friends and everything yep, as well. Absolutely. So it's, that, it's why board game cafes have been so fun to go and check out as well. Yeah. Because you can go and meet loads of different people that are from completely different walks of life. Mm -hmm. And they come, come down and sit around a table and play some games with you. That's yeah, very cool. absolutely. Yeah. And when you've got gateway games, like Goblin Goblins, for example, it's really easy Little to understand. Like yep. yeah, so. Really easy to understand, really quick yeah. to go through the instructions. Mm -hmm. And it's just a real fun humorous game yeah. that you know, really gets you going. It's a great yeah. start to a board game evening. And then from there, you can go on to things like Azul or Photosynthesis mm -hmm. or Cult Express. Um, yeah. Yeah, so make sure to come and check these guys out here at the UK Games Expo. There, I was losing my words there. <laughs> I'm so excited about board games in my head. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, these guys are going to be here uh, throughout the rest of obviously today and through Sunday as well. So if you haven't managed to get here on Saturday, make sure to come on Sunday and check these guys out. Your booth number again was? Is we are Hall 1, H10. H10. There we go, guys. So make sure to come and check these guys out. I feel it's been fantastic talking to you about all the stuff with Board Game Crate. Uh, make sure to come and check out everything to do with their website. It's boardgamecrate.co.uk. So go and check these guys out and see. Because as you can see, loads of awesome stuff that's going to be involved in these boxes go forward and things. Hopefully you guys go from strength to strength as well. Hope so. Thank you. Thanks. So yes, make sure to remember to tune into the rest of the uh, live streams and live blogs we're doing this weekend. Um, as I said at the beginning of this little uh, segment here, we're going to be giving away this Geek and Sun table. So it's going to be part of a raffle. So as you say, man, it's an amazing It's really table. nice. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it might but, yeah. not be here after the stream. It might just take it out piece by piece. <laughs> so when this fades away, it's just gone. And I'm going to be sitting in this empty studio. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. So yeah, all you've got to do is go over onto the, uh, the page linked at the top of the live blog, fill in the little questionnaire, answer a very, very simple question about five pounds for a ticket to get involved with this and you could potentially be walking away with an amazing geek and some table to play your games on. Of course, we're going to be doing loads of stuff throughout the rest of the uh, the weekend here where we're going to be doing some amazing comment to win prizes as well. So if you want to go over and check out some of the videos, you can get involved with some of the vendors we've been talking to, check out all the things they're doing, win some really cool games as well in that uh, in that sense. So yes, we'll be back with a new segment very, very soon. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, make sure to check out the live blog and everything like that. And yeah, we'll see you guys in a very little bit. <laughs>